can still remember my first Fiverr experience like it was yesterday. Truth be told, I didn't really prepare much for the exam because I had already read well for the objective, theory and practical parts of the exam. It was the last exam that we did. Generally, Viva exams are usually the last set of exams that you do in medical school. That morning, I got dressed as usual, wore my white laboratory coat that had a tag with my name, serial number and matriculation number on it, and left my hostel for the faculty where the exam was scheduled to hold. My first Viva exam was in physiology. When we arrived at the faculty, they shared us in such a way that some students started with anatomy, some with biochemistry, while others with physiology. I was among the students who started with physiology. So we formed a queue and stood outside the department waiting for our turn. When it was my turn, I went inside. There were three examiners in the room. Two of the examiners were lecturers in my school while the third was an external examiner. I greeted all three of them and then the external examiner offered me a seat and tried to make me feel comfortable as I was already feeling a little bit stressed. The first question the external examiner asked me was, what is your favorite topic? I took full advantage of the opportunity and directed him to an area I was fully grounded in. I told him my favorite topic was gastrointestinal physiology and by the time we were done with the Viva exam, the external examiner shook hands with me and told me I should consider going into gastroenterology as a specialty in the future. At the end of the exam, one of the internal examiners in the room called me and told me that the external examiner continued to sing my praises even after I had left the room. I learned later that I scored 8 out of 10 in the Viva exam. Hello there, this is Medzone TV, home to medical school excellence. Medzone TV is an online medical community that presents you with series of web-packed activities ranging from captivating stories, top-notch medical content, fascinating videos, quizzes, monthly challenges, and a lot more you can't afford to miss. In today's video, I will be sharing with you key tips and strategies that will help you pass your Viva exams in medical school. Please sit back, relax, and listen. For those who don't know, Viva is short for Viva Voce. It simply means an oral exam. It is a form of examination conducted by means of spoken words in which the examiner poses questions to the student and the student has to answer the questions in such a way that demonstrates sufficient knowledge and understanding of the subject in order to pass the exam. Viva is not another theory exam and hence should not be prepared for the way you would normally prepare for a theory exam. It is quite different from written exams as there is less time to think and answers cannot be returned or rewritten once given. You cannot deal first with the questions you know best and come back later to the ones you do not know so much about. There is a greater degree of unpredictability as the examiner can ask anything from anywhere according to his or her own will and liking. It is generally the final hurdle every medical student must pass to proceed to the next level in their medical education and usually has some elements of subjectivity, personal bias and favoritism. Unlike written exams, Viva Voce assessments are conducted in person and the examiner evaluates the student's response based on their own subjective interpretation of the answer. And thus, there is a risk of bias as examiners may have different opinions on what constitutes a good answer. Because this form of exam allows the examiner to interact directly with the student and probe deeper into his or her own understanding of a particular subject as well as ask follow-up questions. It can be more stressful for students than written exams as it provides a more thorough assessment of the student's knowledge and understanding of the subject. Also, because every student gets an equal chance of expressing themselves as each student needs to be assessed individually, it can be more time consuming than written exams. This can be a challenge in large classes or when there are limited number of examiners available. Now you know what Viva is, the next thing you must do that will help you pass your Viva exam is to make a good impression and to present yourself in a professional and respectful manner. Be neatly dressed. Dress up in a professional attire to demonstrate that you take the examination seriously and respect the process. Your lab coat should be washed, wear ironed and must be looking white. Do not wear heavy makeup, 
flashy clothes, jewelries, or paint your nails. The examiner may not say anything, but you will leave a bad impression. Have a clean haircut and shave your beards. The tag containing your name, matriculation number, and serial number should not be torn or ugly looking. Arrive at the examination venue early and on time to avoid any last minute rush or stress. Greet the examiner with a polite and respectful greeting such as good morning or good afternoon sir or ma the moment you enter into the viva room. Don't sit if you are not asked to and don't enter into the viva room unless it's your turn. Try maintaining eye contact with the examiners when answering questions. This shows that you are confident and engaged in the conversation. Show respect to the examiners by listening carefully to their questions and answering them thoughtfully. Don't start speaking in between the question because it will irritate the examiner and you won't be able to listen to the question fully as there might be a little twist at the end. Listen to the question being asked carefully during the Viva exam and prepare the answer in your mind before vocalizing it. Use only formal language and avoid slangs, casual expressions or abbreviations when answering questions. And finally, always go straight to the point and avoid rambling or going off topic. Moving on, to pass a viva, a candidate must not only possess a thorough understanding of the subject, but must also be able to convey this to the examiners. Just like any other medical exam, preparation for viva exam should start early. Viva preparation is not something that is done in a library or in a closed room where you keep reading. Viva preparation is done with friends. You have to get as many people as possible to ask you Viva questions under exam conditions so that you can get used to the stress and anxiety that the exam can induce. The truth is, Viva exams are unpredictable as the examiner can ask anything from anywhere. This means that the examiner can ask questions about any aspect of the course including topics covered in the lectures, textbooks, and other reference materials provided is within the scheme of work. This makes it difficult for students to effectively prepare for Viva examinations. In order to do well, students will need to review the course materials thoroughly and be prepared to answer questions on any topic related to the subject matter. This is why studying the day before your Viva exam or two or three days before the Viva exam may not be beneficial as the time will not be sufficient to review all the materials in the course thoroughly and prepare effectively for the exam. This is why it is important for you to begin preparing early by reviewing the course materials regularly, attending lectures and tutorials, and practicing potential questions and scenarios with your friends so as to have a solid understanding of the subject matter and be better able to communicate that understanding effectively during your Viva examination. If you are still watching this video at this point and probably finding it helpful, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Moving on, the day of the Viva has arrived and finally it's your turn to enter into the Viva room. Walk into the Viva room and greet the examiners politely. Be calm and composed during the Viva. Listen to the question being asked during the Viva carefully and prepare the answer to the question in your mind. For instance, if the examiner asks you an anatomy question like, pick up this bone and tell me about it, try to say everything you know about the bone at a go and don't stop. This will make the examiner know that you have quite an idea about the topic and thus pass you. If the person is an internal examiner, try answering the question in his or her own words. This will create an impression that you are attentive in class or during postings. If you don't know the answer to the question, act like you need a few seconds to record the answer and then say you can't record the answer at the moment or you don't remember the answer currently. This will save time and that way, the examiner will move on to the next question. Never tell the examiner that you are not prepared. It gives them a bad impression about you. Whether you have prepared for the viva or not, Never tell the examiner that you haven't prepared for the viva. More importantly, never argue with the examiner. Do not, I repeat, do not argue with the examiner. Don't contest anything he or she says or try to prove them wrong even if you are convinced that you are right. The best case scenario is that you are correct but you have embarrassed the examiner in the process of proving it. 
The worst case scenario is that you are incorrect and you have made yourself look foolish in front of the examiner. Even if the examiner says sodium is more in the intracellular compartment than in the extracellular compartment, agree with the examiner. When asked to list things, for example, physiological causes of anemia in a female, always start by mentioning the most common things and the things that you are familiar with. Try not to mention difficult things or things that are controversial. Try to direct your viva because examiners will usually ask you questions from the answers you have provided. So where you direct your viva is actually in your hands. Try to mention only the things you are familiar with. That way, if the examiner asks you questions about the things you have mentioned, you can easily answer those questions in depth and impress the examiner. In situations where you provide a wrong answer to a question and the external examiner tries to probe to find out the source of your answer, try not to blame the lecturers or professors in your institution for the wrong answer. Simply say the magic phrase, I am sorry, and the examiner will most likely overlook the mistake. If the examiner gives you a hint so you can correct your answer, try to pick the hint. Although sometimes some examiners might try to mislead you by giving you a confused look or asking you if you are sure even when you have provided the correct answer, try not to get confused. Stick to your answer if you feel you are right. It's just to test your knowledge. Only very few examiners will try to confuse you even when you are right. Finally, when you are asked questions like what is your favorite topic, try not to choose a particular chapter. Instead, choose a broader topic. This will create an impression that you are a serious student to the examiner. For instance, during my physiology viva when I was in my third year in medical school, I said my favorite topic was gastrointestinal physiology and not digestion or absorption of fats, carbohydrates or protein. And that's all for today's video. If you have any questions or additional tips to share, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and staying with us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed watching this video, then please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more exciting content. Also, don't forget to share this video with your friends and colleagues as I am quite sure that there are people in your cycle that will find the information contained in this video valuable.